today I have a very special guest with me today and her name is Oluwa Banke Obarami. She is an IT compliance officer at GTB Bank. Welcome Banke. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah, we're excited to have you here too. So Banke, um, I know that when you're a child, <laughs> there's this question everybody else asks you, what do you want to be when you grow up? So what was your answer to that legendary doctor. question? <laughs> doctor! Okay. I wanted to be a doctor till biology brought me back to reality. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about it. Okay, so I wanted to be a doctor up until SS1 and to start biology and nah, I wasn't having it. It wasn't it wasn't my favorite uh, subject to, to be honest. Okay. I was um, doing really well in mathematics and further math and physics. Uh -uh very easily. I Mass didn't school. have to put any effort wow. into it. Thanks to, you know, secondary school teachers that were amazing. And um, so I quickly told myself the truth that met the <laughs> doctor wasn't for me. So. Mm -hmm. And um, my dad is an engineer. So okay. um, he inspired me to study engineering because he always told me, okay, Engineers are pretty much really good in math. They need mathematics. They need further math. They need physics. Um, so I didn't want to study chemical engineering because I thought it was about chemistry. Oh. I really didn't like chemistry as well. Okay. So physics, math, electrical, electronics engineering. Sweet. So that's how I ended up studying electrical electronics engineering. And uh, yeah, we are here today. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So she was a math guru for that math. Okay. And biology, everybody was like, oh, biology, yeah. biology. Mm -mm. Imagine. All those, um, all those names, all those biological names. <laughs> nah, uh, my... <laughs> interesting. So how did you get into IT? Okay, after graduation, um, service, came back. I got a job with IPNX, Nigeria Limited. Okay. Um, it's a telecommunications company. And I was in network management, network support. So I pretty much was functioning in the role that I was um, tasked with, like the first level support. Okay. Um, supported customers, supported um, engineers that were on, on the field. So um, when customers had issues with their links, my role was to troubleshoot. Um, we use things like trace routes, um, ping, um, find out what's happening, if the network is slow, why mm -hmm. is the bandwidth being overutilized, things like that. And um, went on and on and on. And then I, I got a job with Dancy Trust Bank. Okay. And we had to go to training school. But I was very, very honest with the people that interviewed me. Okay. It had to be technology because that was I was already on the path. path. And I liked well, I liked technology. Okay. Not necessarily network management. And uh, let me quickly add, in school, in three hundred level I I um, I had um, I took the exam C C N E. So okay. I was um, I got the certificate, Cisco certified network associates. And you know, it was in school, so yeah, we're all reading. I read, I passed. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then I started CCMP, which is the next step, Level. and I, I pretty much dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped out because it was just boring. I'm like, oh, I couldn't do it. I tried. It wasn't now. Nah. Mm -hmm. So when I got the job with GT Bank, I was very specific. I told people interviewing me, I know that you people can be interesting and take, think you can take me to marketing. I'm not having that. I would resign. I would leave. So um, I got, we, after the training school is for about um, three, four months. Oh, yeah. So after that, I was posted to technology. And then we go to see the CIO of the bank. And okay. He asked Chief, us, Chief Information Officer. officer yes, okay. Chief Information. And he then asked what role would you like to to um, function as in technology and um, he that was a very rare opportunity for you to choose where you the, and then he was telling us about the various departments and I didn't want network management again right. but I knew that if I didn't see it they would put me there because I already had yeah, the portfolio exactly. I was looking in that line yeah so I he spoke about governance and strategy and spoke about every, every other thing and I'm like, everybody wants to be a developer, nah. <laughs> 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 I 
and then so I was it was elimination. I eliminated all the things I didn't want. Options. And I'm like, okay, governance and strategy, I didn't know anything they were doing. He just said, oh, they think with me, we sit down together, come up with a strategy for technology and all of that. Sounded interesting. I'm like, okay. Still this. IT governance and strategy. It and is. He spoke about all the things. I'm like, compliance. Let's just see what they do there. <laughs> and I put out IT compliance. And I got it. Nice. Yes. So, so once you got I'm... into IT compliance, yeah. what was your first impression of what they actually do when you got to understand their work? That's when I knew that um, I wasn't here too far. <laughs> 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 because I thought, oh, let's just chill, IT compliance. Uh, and then it's interesting that even people that work in technology mm -hmm. do not know a lot about IT compliance. So we had this. Um, We'll call it word round. So you go around all the various teams and chat with them. They tell you what they do. Mm -hmm. And every other person just had the impression that, oh, they were just chill. They, they, I mean, you're not developing, you're not supporting applications. So um, you have it easy. You won't. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Wow. And you know, it's when people come and they will tell them what we do or they have um, the opportunity to my current unit head um wasn't in the in the role when okay. i joined so he came he was a tester okay and so when he came he thought he was coming to so have chill. a vacation mm -hmm. but he, now he's like uh-uh <laughs> <laughs> so, so can you just tell us what does it compliance mean entail. what does it entail okay so it compliance um for the technology space all right there are a lot of policies and standards and frameworks that guide technology, the industry. All right. So, um, and I feel like the most regulated industry is the financial industry. Mm. So, um, it's so regulated, you have to comply with a lot of standards and um, frameworks. And a framework pretty much guides you, a standard compels you. Mm. So, a framework will tell you how to do things, but then you still have to figure figure out how you would adapt it to your environment. But a standard will say you must do this and you must, must. do it. So um, for IT compliance, there are various standards in the um, that our regulator in Nigeria is CBN. So CBN says you must comply with ISO 27001, that's information security. You must comply with ISO 20001, that's um, service management. And then you must comply with ISO 22301, that's um, Business um, business continuity, and they also tell you you must be at level three for COBIT. COBIT is a framework. Okay. You must, you know, you and they give you all those PCI DSS. That um, it's a standard for CAD environments, CAD production, and and all of that. So you must have those standards. You must comply with them. Mm -hmm. So my role is to ensure we are complying. So. The first step is to, if it's a new policy, mm -hmm. we go through a training, go through the policy, see what it says, and see how you can adapt it to an environment. And now, you know, human beings, we've adapted to it, mm -hmm. we can lose touch. So my job is to always ensure we have not lost touch. Interesting. So we have audits. So it's in, um, I combine skills from security, audits, and then compliance. Wow. So because auditing um, is what helps me to always check that we are up to date or we are following, we are following what standards. Follow. Exactly. Security, it will just make sense because the standards will tell you um, segregation of roles and responsibilities. Um, your test environment should not be interacting with your live environment. environment. You know, and things like that. What um, what encryption protocols are you using? Are you using TLS 1.1, which is very vulnerable? Are you using TLS 1.2, which is okay? Are you using? Um, do you have you know all those things? So that's where security comes in. Um, are your applications vulnerable? You know, um, you have tools you can use to check all of that. Um, so different things like that. Um, do you have people that have resigned from your environment that still have Has access? access? Hmm. You see? Like that. So you know all this yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can be an IT compliance officer, who knows? And then processes are really important. Okay. Now the process um everybody okay, so developers are like the most popular 
um, IT, people, IT, IT people, professionals. professionals. So now, a developer is only a developer and okay, I'm, I'm fine, mm -hmm. turn it out. But as a process, there should be a document. Mm. In fact, there should be requirement guardian. What do you want from this product? Because I would then develop something you are now saying, oh, I don't like it. No, but did you say you wanted it like that? So that, so that the project manager doesn't have a problem. Mm -hmm. So there's a process to follow. Requirement graduate, you put down the requirement, everybody signs off, I'm okay with the requirement. Um, it moves to the developer, the developer turns out the product. The tester tests and then there's security testing. So everybody has to sign off. So the life cycle should be followed. Okay. So that's where I come in. I share that, okay, did you, is this, was this product, did it go through all the, the process? process? Yeah. Um, okay, now, are we checking to ensure that um, our, even the pr uh, products that we have live, mm -hmm. that customers are using, are not vulnerable? vulnerable? So we keep checking all those things. We check quarterly. We check quarterly, and that's just for products. We check processes as well. So I bring out all those standards and go through them and see are we going according to what, what has been set, set down? Now, after we've done it for ourselves, external auditors will come. Come in. Because okay. CBA, <laughs> the financial industry is really regulated. They come in. Now, they will send external auditors. You would pay for external auditors as well. And then CBA will come. Everybody is coming to just ensure that everything is all right. Because technology and security they have to be in sync. Wow. So, Guys, did you hear that? That was like a long breakdown. So if you thought or if you were thinking that compliance is for you to be faffing around, now you know better. So for somebody that is interested in becoming an IT compliance officer, how would you advise the person to go about it? Okay, first thing is, um, first of all, congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. The good thing about it is that you get to know a little, eventually, a lot about what everybody is doing. Do because you have to, I mean, if I'm auditing you, I should know what is expected of you. So that's the good thing. So the first things first, there are courses you can take. You can take, um, you can start from frameworks like ITO. Okay. ITO. You can start to study COVID 20, 20, 2019 framework. You can start to study and take exams if you can with um, all the ISO standards I mentioned earlier. Um, you can start to study PCI DSS. What does it say? What does it entail? Mm -hmm. So um, that will help. But there are also organizations that take entry level. Um, entry-level staff and okay. you really don't even need I, I didn't I didn't join IT compliance with any knowledge of anything IT compliance okay I just joined I joined with my experience of network support which has come in handy but then you can still do it and then it's easier as well when you uh, work in an environment that is really dynamic and would put a demand on you to produce results so you have to learn and because you are doing it it's, mm -hmm. it's faster for you so when you do go through all those standards all those policies and then start from there so where are some so aside like the financial space mm -hmm. is there somewhere else or other sectors that yeah, any people technology will... any technology organization has to i mean service management talks about Okay, if you have an incident, you should record your incident. So, of course, there are incidents in every um, okay. organization. In fact, it's not only technology, because you have incidents in any organization, but I'm just, um, you know, privy with them um, to the technology space. So, if you're in technology, anywhere you are, whether it's the financial, mm -hmm. technology aspect, or just any, any, any organization that has a technology um, team team and if you if you if you look around you now most businesses are driven by technology, technology yeah. by technology so it, you are you are you are very um, relevant anywhere really it just depends on the um how how um, what's the word how um, advanced the organization you're working with is because there are some organizations that don't see the value 
in governance and you know, it takes people so it comes in handy really because it helps a lot it would help you organize your your organization mm -hmm. and it would ensure that technology is producing results mm -hmm. because there's also an aspect in COVID 20, uh, 2019 that talks about strategy and how technology strategy should align with the organization strategy so in this case the bank strategy because the bank cannot be saying our uh, strategy is to have two million customers and mm -hmm. technology is not aligning. aligning. I say a bank that is riding on technology. So if they are if they are looking to move from two hundred thousand to two million, it's going to ride on your infrastructure. So technology should always be aware that this is where we are going. Are we ready for so, where the bank is going? Mm -hmm. What are we going to churn out to help the bank get to where it's going? Are we going to churn out more products? Are we going to, you know, and all of they that? So that's where the SSD banking came, came from, from. You know, we need more customers. And then you can't keep going to the streets to be looking for market, um, to market um, everybody. Okay, what, what makes you different? Why should I not bank this um, access bank? Why should I bank this Chitty Bank? So, oh, we have USSD banking. You don't have to go anywhere to transfer. Transfer on your phone. You don't even need the internet. Do you understand? So, mm -hmm. the technology aspect always has to align with Wait, yes. the business itself. Yes. So, that's what COVID to give you. So, at the end of the day, you see that you are, you are giving value to your organization. Sweet. Sweet. Thank you very much. Yeah, so, I'd like to know, this is for you now. Okay. What's like... Oh, will you rate your career journey and satisfaction right now? One being the lowest and ten being the highest? Uh, 7.5. Mm, why? I'm happy where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy where I'm at. I'm not, I, I really don't compare a lot. I'm not that person that compares myself with mm -hmm. any other person. I mean, I started with zero knowledge mm -hmm. of, of what I'm doing now. And I'm... I'm, yeah, yeah, just I'm very dishing confident. out, you know, <laughs> telling us what compliance is all I'm about. Very confident. And mm -hmm. I must add, when I started in IT compliance six months into the job, if you ask me, okay, what do you do? I wouldn't still be able to explain. But now, they say when you explain something to a five year old, mm -hmm. it means you understand. That's that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I feel like even if you are not motivated, I am motivated. <laughs> because now I know a lot better about what compliance, IT compliance officers do and governance. Yes. And I know that it's really necessary and important. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Bike, for coming. Thank if you, you have me. questions for her, please do drop down in the comment section below. I'll get her to respond to them. Yes, Don't worry, she will. she's interested in having more <laughs> compliance people. She already told you congratulations. So. <laughs> and if you enjoyed this video, like, share, comment, and let us subscribe. see you. And subscribe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see you in the next one. Bye-bye.